Hey everybody, some gadget guy here, and it's time to wrap up our review of Lenovo's audacious battery-powered touchscreen all-in-one Windows 8 PC, the Flex 20. After getting over the initial shock of what Lenovo has done here, you quickly see that this thing has potential. On a first overly simplistic impression, it would seem Lenovo delivered an unwieldy Windows tablet. But depending on application, the Flex handily competes against other all-in-one desktop solutions too. There's a healthy Venn diagram crossover between function and novelty here. I was a little concerned about the Core i3 used in the Flex 20. I've honestly never handled a proper Windows PC powered by anything less than a Core i5. Thankfully, the lower power Intel chip gave me few hiccups. I think it would be fair to say that Lenovo is positioning this as a family entertainment machine, which can also do some mid-level work. Its $750-ish dollar price tag would seem to confirm Lenovo's target audience for this is not looking for a workstation-grade solution. General system performance is snappy and quick. Windows 8 utilizes the hardware here well, and Lenovo's custom interface is well-suited to showing off the benefits of the Flex 20's design. Aura presents a fun, minority report-style custom skin. I worry that as Aura uses its own app store, there might be some confusion for family members as to where some games and apps actually live between the Metro interface and the Lenovo skin, but ultimately, it's a fun tool to utilize a touch screen on such a large monitor. You don't often have to discuss battery life when you're talking about an all-in-one PC, but it's surprisingly good considering the display size. As long as I wasn't gaming at max screen brightness, I was able to routinely surpass Lenovo's estimates of two hours of runtime. Now, I detailed most of the accessories in my first impressions video, but I spent a little more time playing with some of the other included software, and I was really taken with Lenovo Tycoon. It's a Monopoly-style board game played with a wireless die. Not only is it a fun game, but it really does show off the thought Lenovo put into this piece. PC. Lay the system flat, and it's a fun tabletop gaming experience. It's a novel way to bring a family or a group of friends together face-to-face -to -face using a computer. The Flex performs well for more traditional gaming as well. Firing up Halo Spartan Assault, the game plays fluidly, though using the touchscreen feels a bit silly. I was happy to find that more high-end games played well too. Arkham City fired up fine, though obviously I wasn't playing with all of the graphic settings maxed out. It's nice knowing that this machine can handle a variety of software titles, not just Windows 8 Angry Bird style apps. As a work machine, Flex is more than capable of pounding out documents and spreadsheets. Thankfully, we've entered an era of computing where that's not really much of a concern anymore. As with the gaming though, I was pleasantly surprised to see how well the Flex handled audio recording and editing. It's more than adequate for voice and podcast style applications, and I think it would make a handy solution as a gigging interface for musicians. There are a couple of nitpickies we have to address. When used as a desktop, it can provide a number of different angles, but I like mounting my monitors higher than table level. If it's going to live more as a desktop than a semi-portable slate in your home, you'll probably want to invest in something more robust than my cardboard box stand solution. Now, I really wish the Flex had more than two USB ports. There is no ethernet connection as the Flex is Wi-Fi only. And while Lenovo includes a really decent wireless keyboard and mouse in the box, it's RF, not Bluetooth, so it'll use one of those precious USB ports for the receiver. Just one additional USB port would allow you to connect the mouse and keyboard, a USB to Ethernet adapter if you needed it, and some kind of external mass storage all at the same time. Only having the two USB ports can sometimes feel a touch claustrophobic. I also ran into a bug where the Flex would refuse to wake up after a prolonged sleep. I had to fiddle with the power management settings to minimize when that would occur, and I really do hope Lenovo addresses this in a future update. So what we're left with is a really interesting and unique computing experience which has some overlaps with tablets, laptops, and desktops without being any one of those things on its own. It spent a couple weeks on my desk in my office before I got comfortable moving it around. But once I loosened up, it was liberating being able to move it to the kitchen or the living room. I could work where I wanted to on a larger screen than my laptop. I could run a small presentation without needing to lug an additional monitor or projector around with me. Plus, it's a solid all ages experience with options for traditional input or touchscreen control. So if you're shopping for a home or small office desktop, but you want something a bit more flexible, the Lenovo Flex 20 might be the way to go. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching, commenting, subscribing, and sharing my videos. I've always appreciated it, and I will catch you all on the next review.